What up? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And look at you. You done stumbled upon little OTB Saints, where we bring you all the latest black and gold coverage. Who are the Saints going to draft? Who's going to be their quarterback? What does the salary cap look like? All that information and more. Hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe. Now I want to talk about Jameis Winston. So uh, Jameis signed with Cleveland yesterday, yes? Uh, was like one year's eight million, something like that. Yeah, one year deal. But it uh, it it brings it means the end of the Jameis Winston era, and what an odd, odd, odd relationship it has been. Um, when he first signed with the Saints, remember we were so kind of. Over, well, not over. What's the word I'm looking for? You know how sometimes you get too comfortable in a relationship and then just anything strange you start to kind of want? Well, Jameis was the strange to Drew Brees' long-term relationship. Do you remember at the end, Jake? There were a lot of takes out there, and even I was feeling this. Now, I'm pretty sure I said, like, this is ridiculous at the time. This is crazy. I know this doesn't make sense, but it was like Breeze retired. And then there was like the kind of, oh, he might come back. He might come back, right? And we're all kind of like, nah, no, man. Look, Breeze, you gave everything. He's done. We're kind of ready to like move on, ready for a new era. And I, I, I basically whipped myself into a frenzy over Jameis and thinking about the, um, Thinking about, I like comparing his career to Breeze's and uh, how, how Breeze in San Diego for, was struggled for the first few years and how he then flourished in New Orleans. And if you looked at their numbers, actually, James's time in Tampa was very akin to that of Breeze in um, uh, San Diego and everything. And it felt like maybe James could be this real franchise guy 2.0 and all your dreams were going to come true. And then it just never happened. But where the Jameis Winston era of the Saints gets so interesting is he's still beloved. Even more so, he became a champion of the people. Now, I think we all would have loved to see what would have happened had he not gotten hurt that year, in which were they five and two at the time when he got hurt? They beat the Bucks five and two. Five and two. He had 14 touchdowns to three picks. Uh, They were rolling. He was dancing in the locker room. That's one of the first Jameis moments in which everybody really started to fall in love with him, dancing in the locker room on the crutches. So I would have loved to have seen what could have happened if that injury had never taken place. But the reason why this era is so confusing is that normally in sports, especially if you play quarterback, the only way for a fan base to love you is if you is if you is if you win. Right. Like otherwise they're not gonna like it. It's a, it's a very um meritocratic thing it's not like it's 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 not a lot of opinion you you I I, I thought that was the only way and yet James proved that uh charisma and just being likable and funny can go a very long way because if you saw the tweets yesterday you would have thought you had someone that led you to like multiple division titles right in multiple ways I mean it's all these tweets of like you're a New Orleans legend and we'll never forget you like you and the city are always going to be tied together, and I get it because I love James too. I I I sat here for two years and convinced myself that he was going to be awesome, and it never quite happened. But I've just never seen anything like it in terms of how deeply ingrained and beloved he got to be by the fans, where there was relatively little on-field success. It it's really not a situation that I can throw another comp out there for you because you're right. You want your quarterback to be great. And if he's not great, then you're going to have questions. Even if a quarterback's good, you're going to have questions. Like, you can have a good quarterback, and still there's going to be 20% of your fan base is like, I hate that guy. Get that guy out of here. Looking at you, Cowboy fans. Mm. Right? So that that that's going to happen. Like, think about that. Like, Dak Prescott has done some really good things in the NFL, and there's probably, Taylor, how many, like, honestly, no jokes, how many Cowboy fans, like, percentage, do you think would want a new quarterback right now? Um... 40%, 40%, 50%. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? I'd say about 40. And right? James has done, and what, half of my tag? Less than half? Less than half. When he was in New Orleans? And, you, yeah, and, and he didn't even start a full season. Yeah. Exactly. And you can ask Saints fans, and you're right, T-Bob, they love this guy. They absolutely love him. And look, Dak does a lot of things in the community in Dallas, up in North Louisiana as well. So, like, 
that's not the only reason. He's just a very likable human being, and yep. everyone enjoys being around him. And he's always the energy. And Great I just energy. I don't have another comp of a guy that didn't turn out to be the guy you thought maybe he could be, and still the fan base loves the guy. It's so, incredible vibes. Yeah, I mean, he's, I I think now I don't now I don't know what he is in the quarterback room. I don't know what he is as far as helping the starter get ready. I don't know that about it because I haven't been around him. But if he's anything like I think he is, then he's the perfect backup to have in multiple places. He's probably pretty damn good if the Saints brought him back some, uh, after after Andy Dalton yeah. took that job. Like to 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 choose to bring him back. That means that because because if he was ever going to shut it down, Jake, it would have been when they gave Andy Dalton the job, right? right. That that's when you would have expected a veteran quarterback to just kind of maybe say, okay, whatever, dude, this is BS, I'm out. Because, you, yes, I guess like you 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 could say Dalton's better. I think safer might be a better word. I think Jameis is more uh, volatile, but also will make bigger plays, but also make bigger mistakes. Whereas Andy's just more even keel or whatever. Like I still would have loved to see Jameis uh, get more opportunity, but Dennis Allen being a defensive minded head coach, I think he wanted the more safe, more measured approach of Dalton, but. Um, yeah, like that. That's not like he was behind a quarterback that was just clearly head and shoulders above him. And so, if he didn't shut it down and he continued to good, do good things there, that's a sign of maybe one of the reasons why he's so beloved. He's a good team player, uh, and and he was all in on the city and on the team. Um, he just it's it's kind of sad, Jake. I wonder what could have been. Not only had he not gotten hurt that year, but if he had had more time on task with uh, Sean Payton. Uh, because obviously Sean Payton was also one of those personalities that when he was in New Orleans, uh, he just made it cool as hell. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders talked about it the one year that he played here. So talking about how uh, Payton's just different and the vibes in the locker room are just fun and it's loose. And I don't think that you really get any of that as much with Dennis Allen. And then fascinatingly, Jameis ends up almost becoming a voice of the people Um Against Dennis Allen in a lot of way at the end, uh, yeah. going out uh, basically as like the leader of a of a of a revolution or the leader of a sect of the fan base and of the team that does not believe that Da is uh, the guy. And you had the ultimate team leaders on this team back up who, Jameis Winston. Yeah, not Dennis Allen. Yeah, everybody talk about like, and that's the thing about this. To your point about teammates, every. Single person, that's everything that they always said yeah. when they mentioned Jameis, incredible teammate. Yeah. Incredible teammate. And when I said, like, I didn't know what he was to the starting quarterback, that doesn't mean, like, as far as his mentality towards him or if he's like, I ain't helping that guy out. I want to be a starter. I'm just saying, like, there's some guys that are really good at cutting up tape and giving the quarterback exactly what he needs. And, hey, here's what they like to do on third downs. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Not that Jameis wouldn't want to do that. I just don't know that not being in that room. But you're right, T, when that situation happened, you know he's beloved in the locker room because, again, Cam Jordan, the ultimate leader on this team. Yeah. He is the the captain. Like He's got the big C on his chest, and he's had it for a long time. Even when Drew Brees was there, he still had a portion where, like, this is the captain if it's not Drew Brees, and he backed up Jameis immediately. Yep. He said, I would have scored again on Atlanta if I could have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, like, yeah, this is going to be one of those guys that, in the locker room, is probably going to be missed. And now I'll be curious to see – like where they go, what direction they go in, because we know like Taysom Hill's still in this roster, but Taysom's not in that quarterback room anymore. Do you do you draft another quarterback? You got Jake Hayner last year in the fourth round. Is he going to be your backup? Do you bring in a veteran quarterback mm. to be able to help Derek Carr and, and get ready for certain situations? Because you know Jake Hayner hasn't thrown an NFL snap yet. What's uh, what's Joe Flacco doing? Currently, right now, probably. Or maybe you just wait and we sign Joe Flacco in like November. Or you sign Joe Flacco yeah. when your quarterback gets hurt and then you I, make him start like that week. I was probably saying like sitting on a couch because I don't think like Joe's probably like getting ready for the season since he doesn't have a team. And then like whenever that time comes, call him out of the bullpen. He's like probably like, hey, give me, give me six days. Just warm I'll up be the there. alarm. Wow, just amazing black and gold takes right there, Jake. I don't think I've ever heard any takes that are better than the two guys that just gave you that take. And you can keep getting them by going ahead and liking, subscribing, ringing the bell to get notifications when we post. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next OTB Saints.